from short selling to big bonuses are under threat. But even one former trader thinks change is overdue. I do think that the city is dominated by bonus culture, and I do think the bonus culture is to blame for the credit crunch and the problems we currently have. I also think it's going to take several years at least before that changes, because you don't go into the city for the love of the job or, or for the creative potential. You go there to make money. And it's very big money. The top five US investment banks paid a record £36 billion in bonuses to their staff in 2007. That's an average of £191,000 per person. Can we have our next expert witness, please? Hello. Hello. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Garen Tanderson. I was a stockbroker for 12 years and I've just written a book um, showing people what really happens in the city. And you're going to show us a film about savings and pensions, yeah? That's right, yes. OK, let's see it. Here in the city, there is a genuine crisis. I have never seen traders looking so glum. And if the banks are in crisis, you can bet it's going to be the customer next. Mark and Tony Cole had their house repossessed after they fell behind with their mortgage. Now they are living in a two-bedroom house with their five kids. But the pain hasn't stopped there. The bank have just closed their current account. First time we knew that there was a problem with our personal accounts was both me and my wife put our cards into the cash point machines and both cards were basically taken by the machine. With a message on the screen saying refer to bank. My wife sat next to me. The bank hadn't provided their mortgage, yet Tony and Mark say that being overdrawn by just £150 for three weeks was enough to lose their account. I feel like we're lepers, like social lepers. Like you have a bad time on one thing, and then it's like a domino effect. Everyone else is um, dumping on you and they won't help you at all. Their bank rejects the criticism, saying they took the decision to end the banking relationship after the Coles didn't respond to any of their attempts to contact them. The lending landscape now is almost unrecognisable from where we were 15, 16 months ago. Then lenders were salivating to give you money, a mortgage, cheap credit cards, cheap debt. They were fighting for your business. Now, they're not quite as keen. They don't have the cash themselves. They're trying to cherry pick the best customers who can still get competitive products. But now you need a bigger deposit on your mortgage if you want to get a cheap deal. You need to have a really good credit score if you want a cheap credit card. Banks do want the customers who have cash, though, but many consumers are scared of putting their money into savings for risk of losing them if the bank goes belly up. Now, more than ever, the safest place for your money is in the bank. I believe there's absolutely no way the government would allow a retail bank to fail. But it's not as if that means all investors are safe. The real losers are those of us who rely on the stock market for our pension plans. As share prices fall, the situation becomes more and more dire for our pensions because so many are heavily invested in the stock market. I think you can say that for people's pensions it's quite a dire situation. And you've seen that with a million people pulling their money out of personal pensions over the last year and a decline of probably around 20% in the value of pensions. The recent decline in the stock market means that people who are planning to retire soon might find things aren't quite as comfortable as they'd previously hoped. I'm, I'm 61 next month, so I could have retired from the police at 55, but I've worked on try and build up my pension a bit more. Robert Michael has been planning his retirement in Cyprus for five years. I'm, I'm very concerned about what I've, I've been hearing over the last few weeks, and I'm very concerned that my dream of going to Cyprus within a year and retiring, finally, you know, may still not, uh, my, I might still not get there. Actually, thanks to his careful planning and spreading the risk, things probably aren't that bad for Robert and his retirement dream will still happen. And I believe long term the market will bounce back, but many retiring in the near future would have reason to be very worried. There is no doubt that what we are witnessing is a huge banking crisis, the worst we have seen for decades. Recession is now inevitable and that's merely confirmed by what we saw last week. Despite Friday's stock market bounce, I don't think this is over yet. Can I just ask you the moral question, OK? Mm. What really disgusts a lot of people, and a lot of people think is immoral, is that 
incompetent, greedy bankers have been shielded from the consequences of their incompetence, right? Yeah. And we're all suffering from it. So how can we punish them, if you like, for their mm. misdeeds if they do it again in the future? This is the problem. Um, I think we do need tighter regulation. How do you do it, though? I mean, do you say you can't make more than 10 million a year or do you ban certain sorts of financial dealings? What? The problem is, um, if you start putting you know, limits on how much salary you can have, it, it, I'm afraid to say that places like Zurich or Paris or Frankfurt or even Dubai might take over London as yeah. a financial centre. And although we may hate many of the city boys for their excessive lifestyles and their vast salaries, they do bring in quite a lot of cash. They bring, they I, was give us say, I was going to say, I mean, whenever something like this happens, everyone wants to shoot the bankers. And I there are some nasty, yeah. greedy bankers, but there's also some people who just try to do a reasonable job. You say in your film that, that most people's savings are safe. Do you mm. really think there is now absolutely no chance at all that any high street names will go bankrupt? I really do believe that with 99.3% certainty that the government would not allow a high street bank to go bust. What we've seen has allowed to go bust was Lehman's, which was an, in, you know, the fourth largest US investment bank. It's a different kettle of fish when you've got people's savings are the issue. And there will be a bailout of some kind were there to be a problem. So it doesn't matter where you have your money in the UK, you're fine. Essentially, the UK, large UK banks are safe. OK, let's uh, put our necks on the chopping block again. What's your prediction in a year's time for our savings and our pensions? Our savings will still be completely safe where they are now. I'm not worried about that. Our pensions, I am worried about the stock market. I think they'll be worth significantly less than they are now. For what it's worth, for my part, obviously, I don't think a, um, a bank is going to go bust on the high street, so our savings are just completely safe. I completely disagree with you about pensions because they're based on the stock market, and in a year's time, the stock market will have anticipated a recovery and I think will be 20% higher. Therefore, we'll all be saying, hey, fantastic, our pensions have gone up. I think I'm going to go in the middle of you two. I'm going to say pensions probably about the same next year. I mean, the stock market often predicts things well before the, the recession coming, so the, the, we've fallen 25%, so maybe, maybe we'll be about the same. Uh, savings, couldn't agree more. They'll be completely safe. There's no way that the government would let people lose their savings. Phew. Geraint, thank you very much. Thank you.